there a little one down at the bottom when you escape? Is there a little one down at the bottom that you can click on?
Hear these difficult words from John 18. So the Roman commander, soldiers, and Jewish officials arrested Jesus, cuffed his hands and feet, and brought him to Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest. You may remember that Caiaphas counseled the Jews that one should die for all people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed behind Jesus. When they arrived, Peter waited in the doorway, while the other disciple was granted access because of his relationship with the high priest. That disciple spoke to the woman at the door, and Peter was allowed inside. A servant girl asked Peter, You're one of the best man's disciples, aren't you? Peter responded, I am not. All the servants and officers gathered around the charcoal fire to keep warm. It was a cold day, and Peter made his way into the circle to warm himself. Honest asked of Jesus, Who are your disciples, and what do you teach? Jesus answered, I have spoken in public where the world can hear, always teaching in the synagogue and in the temple where the Jewish people gather. I have never spoken in secret, so why would you need to interrogate me? Many have heard me teach. Why don't you question them? They know what I have taught. Well, Jesus offered his response. An officer standing nearby struck Jesus with his hand, scolding. Is that how you speak to the high priest? Jesus responded, If I have spoken incorrectly, why do you point out the untruths that I speak? Why do you hit me if what I have said is correct? Honest sent Jesus to Caiaphas, bound as a prisoner. As this was happening, Peter was still warming himself by the fire. Some of the servants and officers asked Peter, You too are one of his disciples, aren't you? Adamantly, he answered, No, I'm not. One of the high priest's servants, who was related to Malchus, the person Peter attacked and cut off his ear, recognized Peter. That servant also asked, Didn't I see you at the garden with him? Peter denied it again, and instantly a rooster crowed. Servant named 
not trust. And so, with that backdrop, we enter into today's text. With Jesus being bound and marched to the high priest Caiaphas' home, with Peter and another disciple skulking behind the scenes, watching what is happening, but not immediately involved as Jesus is taking it. And there are several unanswered questions within just this short amount of text. For example, where have the other disciples gone? The other ten or nine, my math is a little greater, have gone away. And yet we have Peter and another disciple traveling behind. And we can probably assume that Judas is a with them as well. Who is that person? Another disciple, as it says in our text, they remain anonymous. Perhaps we are supposed to take that their place within the scripture. And then what credentials does this anonymous disciple have that allows him and Peter to enter the home of the high priest Caiaphas? What is it that he knows or what relationship does he maintain with this Roman appointed? Regardless of what the answers may be to those questions and the others that we have, Peter enters the home. And as he does so, he is questioned for the first time if he is a follower of Jesus. And he says, No. In the home's courtyard, Peter warms himself of a fire that burns there, perhaps trying to blend into the crowd, but also observing and being able to observe what it is that is happening. Inside the home, Jesus is being questioned. Questioned by Annas, or perhaps questioned by other authorities as well, and gives a series of blunt answers. And then carries them with his own questions back. After this happens for a short time, Jesus is taken, bound across the courtyard, his hands and his feet as he shuffles across the courtyard. Peter still remains there at the fire, warming himself on a chilly evening, and perhaps he's a little too interested in watching what is happening. So is asked once again, are you a disciple of this man? To which, once again, he answers, no. Shortly thereafter, when the relative of Malchus, and remember Malchus is the one who Peter gave the Van Gogh treatment to, knows Peter. <laughs> this relative knows this, and they're gathered at the fire. They think they recognize him anyway, but again, remember, it's, it's night. They didn't have their cell phones to light up their faces. And so they asked Peter if he was in the garden when Jesus was arrested, perhaps trying to implicate him in the assault on their relative. Peter, once again, again, answers no. And a rooster confirms this as his third denial by crowing. Today's text contrast so starkly with the story we read last week when Jesus came to wash Peter's feet and after this intense yet ill-informed series of questions by Peter, Jesus does in fact wash Peter's feet. After Peter, after Jesus had explained to him the what's and the why's washing his feet, Peter is all that he jumps to and he goes, go for it. That's my summary of it. And he's so enthusiastic about what it is that Jesus has done for him. And he seems so enthusiastic about being a disciple or an apostle of Jesus. And now we get to his story and feels disappointing. The question that I have that I want Peter to answer so much within our scripture for today or some point afterwards is, why the one 
why did you deny being a follower of Jesus after being with him for three plus years? Why did you decide to deny that this was the time to deny that you had followed Jesus when you've done all these other things? Not only were you so enthusiastic about having your feet washed, but you also were there when Jesus was arrested. And even after Jesus was able to secure your release, you decided to follow him to this trial. You were able to find a way to get into the home so that you could covertly see what it was that was happening. But it was only after all of those things that you chickened out. <laughs> It was only then that you denied Jesus. Or maybe you didn't deny Jesus, but that you denied your relationship with him. Why aren't you able to stay the dedicated yet reckless disciple that we can often relate to? Why did you decide now was the time, or time, say that you were not a disciple of this. Maybe these questions are unfair. Maybe they're unfair because what we're trying to do is to project our guilt upon Peter. Maybe we see what is happening within this world and we wonder to ourselves if we are faithfully following Jesus. And so, we project or we slander Peter by thinking or placing ourselves in his place too. Because when we look around this, the world right now, we see unrestrained tyranny that seems to only respond to violence. We see brutal laws being created that are filled with hatred not love. And we look and we see Christianity that has largely closed its eyes to the realities that we see with our eyes. And perhaps the question we ask ourselves is if Jesus' way is too difficult. Perhaps we see what Peter has done in trying to save his own behind. And we wonder if we're also not trying to bow out to save ourselves. Perhaps. Perhaps we realize that we have gone this far, but we don't know how much further we can go. With all of the hurt, with all of the anxiety that fills us, that we see as a result of what is happening within our world. And we are hurt. And we are anxious. And we want to be assured and comforted in our discomfort. But maybe it's okay to be both. Maybe it's okay to be both concerned, worried, and scared about what is happening in our world and to have questions and concerns about whether we are able to follow the teachings of Jesus. Maybe it is okay to have both of those things while still trying to follow Jesus and having neither the need for all of the answers nor to be troubled by the doubts that fill our minds. Maybe we need to know the rest of the story of Peter, which we won't have today. But we will later. Today we may be uncomfortable. There may be some uneasiness within the scripture. There may be some uneasiness within seeing and hearing what Peter has done, and also some uneasiness because of the questions that face us today. May we be a little bit uncomfortable in our uneasiness and in our questions. But we 
you made me put at it. And knowing that this isn't the rest of the story for Peter, and that's not the rest of the story for us. Amen. We now enter into a time of sharing of our joys and concerns.
We pray all these things in your name. Amen. May we stand as we wish or as we are able to sing our sending hymn. Your name will play it on the piano for us, and I will sing verse one, and we'll all sing together the three verses. 